or a towler? Hey, oh wow, I'm really close to the camera. <laughs> How's it going? Very good. Well, thank you as well to you, Laura, for accepting uh, this debate. Um, there was a lot of debate going on on Twitter and in the comments and a lot was said over the last kind of seven days and I think it was the right thing to do to have this debate. So I'm really happy um, that you accepted and, you know, much respect to you. And I know many people didn't want this to happen. I was even getting messages yesterday from people trying to dissuade this to happen. And, you know, what, what can... What can be bad about a healthy discussion over over ideology and all? So, so thank you, Laura, for, for coming here. No problem. Well, thank you for inviting me. Uh, not many people are willing to talk to people with different views. And also thank you to you, Simon, because I know you've been working really hard and you're really busy lately. Because so, they, thank you. Well, they always, they always talk. <laughs> so I think we'll, add, we'll hand over to you, uh, Simon. Say whatever you want to say and, and how you want to you know, get this thing started. Right. Well, okay. Well, I, mean, I mean, everybody, the first question people are going to say is, what's your views on immigration? Now, this goes to both of you. So what we'll do, since you're the host, you can wait because she's a lady. You go first, Laura. Well, how do you feel about immigration? What would you do to change immigration? Would you stop it? Would you curtail it? How would you deal with it? Uh, well, I've, I've wrote an initial statement, if that's okay, which does cover immigration. Um, it details what my concerns are uh, and then what I think the country would be like. Would it be okay to read my statement? Yep. Yeah? Okay. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself to the audience and say that my name is Laura Towler and I am the deputy leader of an organisation called Patriotic Alternative. And um, I know that Ricky pitted this debate as being inclusive, patriotism versus exclusive patriotism which is something I've never heard before but basically I'm here today representing nationalism so uh, nationalism is the belief that all groups of people have the right to their own home so this is a home where their people can flourish and then their culture can flourish as an extension of that a home where their children can be away from harm and conflict and a home where they can govern themselves and have self-determination so I believe that the British have a right to that, just as every other group has a right to that. This does not mean that Britain has to be 100% white. It simply means that we, the British, should be the majority in our own country. So at the moment, Britain is around 75% white British. So this is a figure which has dropped from 82% in 2011 and from 86% in 2001. So the share of British people in Britain continues to fall at a rate of around 5 to 10% per decade. And if we look at England, then the figures are actually much worse. Uh, British people are already a minority, so less than 50% of the population in our capital city, London, in Leicester, Luton, Slough, Birmingham, etc., etc., uh, the cities all over the country. And these are uh, cities which are high in crime, and low in community cohesion and social trust. So basically, if things continue as they are doing uh, with, reg with regards to immigration figures and fertility rates, then by the year 2060, British people will be a minority in the whole of the United Kingdom. By 2037, British children will be a minority in English schools. And by 2027, more than half of the babies which are born in England and Wales will be non-British. That's only seven years away until more than half of the babies born in England and Wales are non-British. So anybody who tells you that this does not matter is ignoring reality, science, evolution and nature. If there's one thing that the recent BLM riots taught us, it's that many black people living in Britain relate more to a black man in America than they do to the British people that they live among. Studies show that every single group of people, apart from white people, have a strong ethnic and in a strong ethnic identity and in group preference. So blacks, Chinese, Muslims, Jews, etc., all encourage each other to collectivize and they defend themselves and progress themselves as a group. They are allowed to be proud of who they are. Yet white people are told to act as individuals. <clears throat> the idea that a Pakistani man could be Japanese is rightly ludicrous, but we are told that anybody can be British. You just have to have a piece of paper issued by the government. As our share of the population continues to drop and as non-British people are lifted into positions of power through diversity quotas and inclusion policies, things will continue to worsen for us. More and more of our people will continue to feel like a stranger in their own home. Crime will continue to rise. More statues will be torn down. There will be further demands for reparations and for us to take the knee. 
our history will be continued to be rewritten. The censorship of dissident voices will continue and our children will continue to be overlooked at best and indoctrinated or abused at worst. If this is how bad things already are when we are only 75% of the population, then what will things be like when we are 50% of the population or less? <clears throat> Suggesting that all the different races and ethnic groups living in Britain will suddenly just forget who they are and will come together under liberalism and inclusive patriotism is a naive and infantile thought. We all know decent individuals from different races, but we are not talking about individuals here. We are talking about millions of people and we have to look at the trends and the behaviour of the overall group. <clears throat> Inclusive patriotism endorses the demographic replacement of my people, the British. Inclusive patriotism does not care about the British because it attempts to dismantle our identity, our communities, and it puts our people at risk. 10 days after the BRLM Facebook page was launched on the 28th of June, Ricky's organisation posted this. At BRL, BRLM, we stand firmly with Israel as they move to reclaim the land that is rightly theirs. Yet BRLM do not share the same enthusiasm for the British and our right to claim our land. I believe that BRLM have wrapped globalism in a union flag and called it patriotism. If anybody can be British, then being British means absolutely nothing, and nothing is exactly what inclusive patriotism stands for. Organisations like BRLM will pretend to care about you. They will present an issue to you, such as three criminals not being deported, and they will allow you to get angry about that issue. They will act as a pressure valve, directing your concern and anger towards that one issue, while at the same time telling you to ignore that you're being demographically replaced in your own home. <clears throat> BRLM, se se BRLM care more about selling T-shirts and not being called racist than they do about the future of Britain. For those of you who want to address the serious issues that our nation faces, there is an alternative. An alternative that genuinely cares about the British and our right to self-determination in our own country. I am unapologetically on the side of the British people. And if you are too, then you are welcome to join us at Patriotic Alternative. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Right. Now, now. right, somebody's, somebody's echoing by. <laughs> So we've got to go to you and ask you, how would you deal with uh, immigration and how do you feel about immigration? And then also give you the, uh, the the chance to answer what Laura's just said there, because that was quite a bit. <laughs> so over to you. All right. Let me first address the, what you said, which is um, immigration. So there's, a, there's no question in my position with BRLM that we have a problem. Everybody knows we have a problem with illegal immigration. They're coming 200,000 a year, according to the records. It's, it's more than likely more. And it's something that is, is not good. And it's not good because it's not controlled. So people are coming in, as we see, every single day on boats, arriving at Dover with no IDs. In fact, we saw videos today throwing identification into the ocean, right? So they're coming in, no ID, no background checks. And there is no way that we know what their intentions are, what their skill levels are, what their past education, criminal records are. So we, we, and I think Laura will agree that we have a problem with illegal immigration. Now, where I have a problem with the stance of Laura and Patriotic Alternative is they're not just interested in illegal immigration. They're interested in immigration as a total. And not just immigration as in new immigrants that are coming in, people that are in this country that have immigrated maybe this generation or second generation or third generation. In fact, Patriotic Alternative want to knock on people's doors and tell people to leave simply because, according to Patriotic Alternative, they are not ethnically British. I mean, it's a ludicrous idea. It's a sensationalist idea. And it's, it's an idea that is dangerous to the fabric of society in Britain. In fact, I would say that Black Lives Matter and the extremists on the Black Lives Matter side, such as the FF uh, FAS, I mean the FF force, um, are just as dangerous as patriotic alternative. In fact, they're two polar opposites of dangerous movements and groups in the country of Britain, and they both should be threat and viewed as dangerous organisations. So, uh, yes, we have a problem with immigration, but definitely we don't have a problem with immigrants so okay so you view patriot alternative as a dangerous organization so we say very very dangerous right okay really dangerous. and the reason the reason why they're so dangerous is because they believe 
in an ethnically white Britain. Now, they painted their picture very, very clean and very nice. But if you really look into their rhetoric, if you really look into their manifesto that they've put on their website, they believe in a white Britain because they talk about indigenous people. So what? how do they clarify indigenous people? They do it by skin color. So anybody who hasn't got a skin color of white or is what or is not white British is in danger to the manifesto and the policies that patriotic alternative are presenting. Danger, they're in danger in one way because they'll be asked to leave. Okay, right, Laura, how do you answer that? Um, well, first of all, not all white people are British. So there are people who exist, such as the Polish, the Spanish, the Italians, the Swedish, etc. We want a Britain that is British, not just a Britain that is white. Can you please provide you me with your it? source for us wanting to knock on people's doors and ask every single non-white person to leave? Where did well, you get that from? How would you do it? No, you've made that up, Ricky. Can you provide well, your not source? Made it up. I've not yes, made you it have. Up. You've I've made, made that up. up. Hang on. You, is you is there a statement. source? Where did you get it from? Your website says, right, that there will be a financial package that's offered to anybody who's not ethnically white British or indigenous or can prove a link to indigenous British people. So how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? There's going to have to be a knock on a letter at the door. What part of that is knocking on people's doors and saying that if you're not white, you have to leave? What we're talking about here is voluntary repatriation. Why do you think you have the right to stop somebody from All leaving right. the country if they want to leave the country? If we're offering generous financial incentives for people to leave and somebody says, do you know what? I don't like the way that you've changed Britain anymore. I'll accept some money and I'll leave. Why do you think you have the right to tell people who want to leave that they're not allowed to leave? Who are you, who are you going to select to choose to offer to leave? Anybody who's not British that wants to leave the country if PA were in power is allowed who, voluntary who is repatriation. How do you establish who's not British? What do you mean? So now you're pretending that the British don't exist. So no, the British I'm, are. A, I'm asking you a very simple question. The British are North. The British are a Northwest European ethnic group. So it's the English, the Scottish, the Welsh, etc. Okay, and what about um, myself? All right, my great, my grandparents' grandparents came from Republic of Ireland. Do I need to go back to Ireland? Okay, so what's what ethnicity are, are your mum and your dad? The British. Well, if, if the British, then you wouldn't be offered voluntary repatriation, no. If you were non-British, okay. then, then you could take it if you wanted to, but you wouldn't have to. So what about um, two young British children, let's, let's say 16-year-olds, two 16-year-olds, their parents have came here from Africa, they were mm -hmm. born and raised here, they mm -hmm. only know Britain, they don't know anything about Africa, they don't know anything mm -hmm. about the language, mm -hmm. are they allowed to stay here? Anyone who wants to stay is allowed to stay, it's voluntary repatriation. But would they be asked to leave? No. The, the, if they wanted to take voluntary repatriation, they could take the offer, but they would not be asked to leave. Okay, but would they be offered the, the voluntary every, every single person in the country who's non-British would be offered voluntary repatriation. It, what I'm trying to get to the bottom of is how you're establishing <laughs> a non-British. Are them two people, I've just talked about, the two kids that were born and raised here mm -hmm. uh, with parents who came from Africa, are they British? No, they're African. How are they African? What do you mean, how are they African? If I was born in China, would I be Chinese? Yeah, but I told you they're born in Britain. Yeah, but if I was... So I'm saying, if I was born in China, would I be Chinese? But what's that got to do with these two kids that are born because in Because these are Africans who were born in Britain, and you're saying that they're British because their mum gave birth to them here. Okay, so, so they're African. They're African. They've mm -hmm. never been to Africa. They don't, know, they don't know anything about the language, the food, the culture. They only know Britain. Mm -hmm. They were born here, they were raised here. They went through mm -hmm. school here. They only know Britain, but mm -hmm. they're but you're saying they're African and they, sh and they potentially should go back to Africa. I'm saying that they're African, and if they want to go back to Africa, they can. I know people who are Pakistani who live in Britain because I lived in Bradford for two years. They don't call themselves British. They say I'm a Pakistani and I have a British what, passport. What about the Pakistanis that do call themselves? If you British? if you called them British, they'd be offended because they're not Pakistanis British. They're that Pakistani. Do call British. Well, it doesn't matter. They're not. They're British citizens. They've got British passports, but they're not British. But they're not British. No, they're not British. So what if what if the okay, let's put it this way. What if the parents came from Pakistan? They gave birth to children. Them children mm -hmm. grew up. They had mm -hmm. kids. Are their kids British? You can't become British. You're either British because your parents are British or you're not. 
Okay, but I've just I've just explained how their parents are British. The parents aren't British. Their parents are Pakistani. Oh, so no matter how many generations of children they have, they can't be British. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So that means that that over 11 million people in this country are not British at all, even though they that's were born right. here, their parents were born here, their mm -hmm. parents' parents were born here. They're yeah. not British. That's I right. Think that's a, I think that's a. It's not only a divisive ideology, but it's absolutely bat crazy. Why is it bat crazy? That? Why would? How could you? I think you calling a Japanese PC. PC. I think like you, you calling a Japanese divisive. person British it's just, it's is, is just mental. As any of the BLM movement, of any of the identity politics that we see in the modern day, it's a really dangerous rhetoric. I think what's dangerous is you dismantling my identity and saying that being British is just You're being born somewhere or having a passport. You think that being British is just having a piece of paper from the government? It's so much more than that. We're a distinct group of people. Would If I was born in New Zealand and I had a New Zealand passport and I like to wear a grass skirt and dance around and I was like, oh, do you know what? I'm just as Maori as you lot. That would be so offensive because they're a distinct group of people and I respect them as a distinct group of people. And the British, my people, are a distinct group of people too. And that doesn't mean that we can't be respectful of other people. But it, it just means that they're not British, because if anyone can be British, then being British means absolutely nothing. If all it takes is a piece of paper from the government, then it's a worthless identity, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned this, this piece of paper thing and you mentioned you keep mentioning New Zealand, Japan. So if you were born in New, if you immigrated to New Zealand right now and you had children in New Zealand, they would be seen as New Zealanders, and I'm very my sure children would be they British. would identify as New Zealanders. No, my children would be and British. Their children would identify as New Zealanders. They wouldn't try and identify as Maori. So you're you're twisting things up there to try and fit your narrative. And well, I'll tell you what, Ricky. So you think you explain to me what it means to be British? Is it just if you're born here? What it means to be British is mm -hmm. if you uh, if you're born here, but not only if you're born here, if you live here. Mm -hmm. if, you res if you respect this country, if you've moved to this country, if you've committed right. to this country, okay, and, so you, and, you have a, and you've been given British citizenship, you have mm -hmm. every single right, just as much as you, to claim right. that you are so, British. So Salman Abedi, who murdered 22 people in the Manchester Arena bombing, he was born in Manchester and he lived here all his life. Is he British? He was British. Right, so I just want your aud your audience to confirm the fact that you think your your idea of patriotism think, includes terrorists. No, 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 no. We're talking about nationality. Hang on, that, no, that, 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 hang on, no, no, no. The fact that he was a terrorist, the fact that he was born over here, mm -hmm. right? And he wasn't a terrorist when he was born. Anybody can turn into a complete wanker or turd, right? However, mm -hmm. I don't agree that that that. That that wasn't a fair thing. What you just said, Laura. There, I'm just saying. Well, I'm right. I'm just making a point that. According to Ricky's definition of what it means to be British, this includes people who hate us. This includes people who aren't even British, oh, who so hate so everything British about is, our country okay. and want to attack so, us. So okay. Britishness is defined whether somebody whether somebody hates us or Here's a question. Can you renounce your Britishness? Is there people here that were born and bred here that were uh, their family have been here for three generations that are now believe now that they're not British? And that they're from, say, for instance, their family from Pakistan, that they now believe, even though that their mum was born here and they were born here, that they're now Pakistani and they hate Britain. Because personally, I believe that's the case. But I mean, I'll put it to you, to, to you sir. How do you feel about that? How, do you do you believe that's the case? Well, first of all, right, is uh, I, mean, I mean, Laura went for the extreme example. And let's just let's just first of all address that. Right. No matter how much. That Manchester bomber hated this country. No matter how much Shemima Begum hated this country, they were born and raised here. They were given British, uh, they were British citizens. They are British, unless they say otherwise. What they're doing, their acts are against Britain, is against the British people. It is against the thread of this nation. It's an evil against this country. In fact, they're enemies to this country. But you can't take away the fact that they were born here. It's simple as that. Now, what, what Laura's trying to do is trying to say that it's only indigenous uh, British people that have the rights that she's talking about here. And she talks about a majority where if you if you watch Laura's speech that she did at the Patriotic Alternative uh, annual get together, she actually says she 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 envisions a 95 percent white British uh, population. That's that means millions of people. 
need to leave this country. Now, the question is, after you've offered your incentives and every single one of them says no, what are you going to do? Well, when you're a movement or a political party, you fo you put forward a strategy that you think is going to work. So the strategy that we've put, and I'm assuming you've done your research and read our 25 point plan. I'm telling it. you your strategy doesn't work. Well, I'm answering your question. What you do is you put forward a strategy. We've got 25 points in our plan and only one of them is about repatriation. The other 24 are about changing the culture within Britain. So we envision that when we offer voluntary repatriation, the people who will take it will be those who either don't speak English, sponge off the system, hate our country, demand reparations, attack us, all that kind of stuff. And the ones who choose to stay will be the ones who love Britain and the British. So we envision that our plan will work. That's why we put put forward our plan. But did you want me to answer a question, Simon, about the Pakistanis? I did, but we've moved on a bit since then. So mm. Can I just ask Ricky a question? So Ricky, yeah. all those people who were in the BLM riots who were like pulling down statues and setting fire to the flag and that, just to clarify, they're British to you. Is that right? I don't know if they're British or not. I don't know where they're from. You don't know where? Okay. So say if they had British passports, those people to you were British. If they were born here and they have British passports, of course they're British. What so when you it? say British lives matter, your all, your patriotism also includes people like that. All lives matter. Their actions are wrong. And their actions are against the, the 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 thread of this nation and society. But are they British is your question. And the answer mm -hmm. is yes. Yeah. And I'm asking, but listen, when you say listen, British no, lives no, 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 matter, listen, you're trying, to paint, you're trying to paint me, you're trying to paint a different picture here. Now, well, you this is who you're talking about. Now, let me tell you the truth about inclusive patriotism, all right? It's a patriotism that is accessible to all skin colours, religions and backgrounds of people that live in this country, that we can be proud together of this nation, of the flag, of this culture. And it's a uniting force rather than a, a dividing force, which is what you are proposing, which is that patriotism is only accessible to native white British people, do you, do you not see the racism in that? Do you not see the, div the divisive nature of that type of statement? It, there's no such thing as inclusive patriotism. If your patriotism extends to people from the whole world, then it's not patriotism, is I it? Because if your, flag represents a nation, which, if your flag represents a nation which includes anybody and everybody, bearing in mind that around two thirds of a million people are coming to this country every single year, then you actually stand for absolutely nothing at all. And that's why I I'm glad that I'm part of Patriotic Alternative the... <laughs> because, because we stand for the indigenous people of these islands. Oh, May I ask you? Indigenous people. Yes, I do. You May I ask for... you okay, another so question? You, the... Hang on, no, 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 one no, no, at a no. time. One who at are time. the indigenous people? Are they the white people? The British, yeah. You, British you people are white. People? Yeah. Do you stand no, for it... black people? British people are white. Do you stand for black people? I wish all other people as well, but my people are the British. And do, you stand, for do you stand for Asian people in this country? What do you mean? Do I stand for them? Like, do you stand for them? A small like, amount you, of you, immigrants you, is okay, but they're not my people. I put my people okay. first. All right, right. So to clarify that, you stand for your people and your people are white British. That's what you said. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. And what you're saying here is you stand for anybody who perceives or thinks or feels or are, as the legal said, are British. Is that correct? No, I didn't say that. I said No, I no, but I'm, I'm asking you actually. I'm putting yeah, yeah, that. yeah, I'm going to tell you. I stand for the people of Britain, all right? The people of Britain. Now, do you believe that a black person born in Great Britain or that comes to Great Britain could be more patriotic that a white person that's been here for years who's an absolute tosser. Is this to me? No, well, I'm going to put it to both of you, actually, because uh, this is a reasonable question. So I'll put it to you, Laura, first. Uh, yeah, I think if we're looking at individuals, there are good and bad in all races, and some white people are assholes, but you can't look at individuals. You, you have to look at the trends of the overall group. And do you know what? You also can't just pick the best people from each country because that's not fair. That's not how this works. You have your people, and you should be loyal to your people. Over to you, Ricky. Yeah, 100%. I would rather stand with somebody who is patriotic without looking at their skin colour. The thing that matters is does somebody care about this nation? Does somebody care about this nation progressing, this nation prospering? If they do, then that's the person I want to stand with. I don't want to stand with somebody who wants to divide this nation, who wants to racially segregate this nation who wants to discriminate against people because of race, which actually is the definition of racism. So if you look at what uh, Laura's talking about and patriotic alternative, they are the definition of racism. 
And I can't stand that word being thrown around as much as it is in the modern day. And it really, really loses a lot of its value. But if anybody in this country of Great Britain wants to see racism, they just need to look at Laura and Patriotic Alternative. They'll find it. So, Ricky, do you, do you support individualism? Is that right? It's more about the individual than the collective? It's, it's more, I'll judge individuals on their merit. Yeah, the so... Listen, no, hang on, I'm not finished. Mm -hmm. The collective is the people of Britain. That yeah. is the collective. And we need to reinstall patriot, patriotism in this country. What you're doing is you're removing the access, accessibility of patriotism to anybody who's not white. That is is wrong and that's what's destroying this country <laughs> yeah so on your gofundme page where you're trying to raise ten thousand pounds it says that you support individualism so it matters who an individual person is and other other groups shouldn't collectivize as a group so how would you prevent our break group our break up groups from acting together because black people muslims jews etc have a very strong ethnic identity and in-group preference so how would you break that up and tell them to act as individuals because you're saying white people can't collectivize so what about other groups how would you break that up well, I've just told you the unifying factor of all people of Britain, and that is patriotism. That is pride in this mm. nation. That is passion for this country. And the way that we do it is we do it through education. The way that we do it is we go back to the schools. We go back to the universities. We, we introduce patriotism again. We fly the flag. We teach the anthem. We, we make patriotism something to be proud of, something to be valued. What's happened in uh, the last 10, 20 years, or maybe even further, is that they have disintegrated patriotism and they have moved it into subgroups and subcultures. Yes, their mass immigration was part of that. And yes, they did mass immigration with a bad strategy, with too many people at once in too many batches, and they need to stop this illegal immigration that's happening now. But what needs to happen for the future of this country is patriotism needs to be installed back in the country, back in the education system, back on our mainstream medias, and stop this focus on groups, minority groups, segregation of, of, of people into LGBTQ, into feminism, into, into religious groups, into this, into that. And we need to stand together and be united and proud to be British. Yeah, I, these are just empty words that mean nothing. If you look They're at Jews, for words. example, I'll, I'll they have a very, like very, very, very strong in-group preference. And you suddenly think by sending them to university or watching something on TV that they're going to forget their in-group preference and just be like, yeah, guys, we're all individuals. Let's unite under the flag. Why does white flight exist? White what? Why, why does white flight exist? White flight? White flight, yeah. So when, yeah, a, when a town becomes more flight. urban and more multicultural, why do white people move away and move to a more white place? Can we put slow mode on the chat? Because it's going so quick that they can't, that they, they've asked me to put slow mode on the chat. Can you do that? On which chat? On the oh, YouTube or? Yeah, on YouTube chat, yeah. It's, it's There's flat. a moderator who's, who's doing it. Cool, lovely. Okay, that's that's all right. I just thought I'd ask because at the moment I can't keep up with it. They've got questions. No. Okay. okay. Flight exit. For Laura, hang on a minute. You haven't even told me. Oh, white flight. Okay. Why does white flight exist? Where's your evidence that white flight exists? I haven't. I haven't seen anything about white flight. But well, assume for one moment that it does, and I'll send you some evidence after the debate. Well, or a white flight from where? From Great Britain from, or from, from cities? From cities that become diverse, white people tend to move out to more quiet villages and places which are less diverse. Why does that exist? You tell me. You're, you're the one who's people, making that claim. And, and listen, the it's because people the don't evidence... naturally and they prefer their own people. Can you tell me what incentives an ethnic minority living in Britain has, has to adopt your form of patriotism? What incentive have they got? Why would they do that? Like I said, it starts in the school. Why what would in, they not, not do it? Not how would Why you would do, they it? Not do it? No, listen, because there's no listen, reason for no, them listen, to do it. No, I go, I go. What they're doing right now is they're indoctrinating children in school, right? They're indoctrinating them with, with um, ideas of 100 genders, ideas of activism, ideas of, of reducing masculinity, a lot of different things that are coming from political groups, right, which I believe is wrong. Well, not, not just me. The law believes it's wrong. 1996 Education Act. They're not supposed to indoctrinate children, but they are. Why are they doing it and how are they achieving it? Because children can be taught things. So children need to be taught patriotism. They need to be taught to be proud of this nation. And they can be. So what you're talking about here is just 
dismantling thousands and thousands of years of in-group preference for certain races and ethnic groups and just saying, we're going to dismantle that in some universities. There's no incentive for you to do it, but you will support our flag and our country, even though that means absolutely nothing. I think it's incredibly naive for you to Who think... Who does it mean do nothing that. to? Who does it mean nothing to? It means nothing to people who already have their own identity. They're not going to start going, do you know what? Yeah, Ricky, let's just support the British flag and I won't identify as a Jew anymore or as a Chinese person anymore. I'm just going to adopt the flag. Listen, we had right. 19,000 19, British children, boys and girls, were groomed, tortured and raped last year. And many of the abusers said that they did this because they saw white girls as easy meat. So how long do we have to wait until this colourblind society that you promote kicks in? Because all it's right. not kicking in any time soon. First of, all, first of all, the grooming gangs, right? They are child rapists, mm -hmm. all right? They're child rapists. And they're also racists because they target white girls. They don't ta target um, children of of the, the Asian and, and communities. Sikh girls as and well. And the reason, the, the reason why is they said they will get in trouble by the communities, all right? But that doesn't take anything away from the, the, the white person, the Asian person, the black person that's committing rape, that's, that's committing trafficking, that's committing any other heinous crime. What you're trying to do is you're trying to use identity politics to, to prove a point that all black and brown people are, are wrong to be in this country. I tell you who's wrong to be in this country, you. And I don't care about your, how, how you want to go about your DNA or how you want to go about anything, but you and your organization, Patriotic Alternative, you're a danger to this country and this society. And I'm telling you now, your ideology is not going to work. But anyway, I've already, I, I, I've already heard that you, you guys are crumbling from the inside, so that's okay. Well, that's not true at all. We're actually growing uh, and going from strength to strength. So just to so the, so, the, so the bulldog nationalists agree with you? Uh, what do you mean? So the Well, we, people disagree on certain things, but it doesn't mean that PA is crumbling. So can I just confirm, you do not care if the ethnic British become a minority in Britain. Is that right? I, I don't think I said that. You've been... No, I, well, I'm, ask, I'm asking you, can you confirm? If British people, native British people, became 50% of the population or less in Britain, would you care about that or would you not well, care? Let me, let, let me address that. Let me address mm -hmm. that, all right? Because according to you, your manifesto and, and your rhetoric, uh, 2060 is around the period when you say that, that the British Not me. People, Professor no David people... Coleman from the University of Oxford. All right, so, so Professor mm -hmm. David Coleman said it, right? Let me mm -hmm. just tell you something about that first. That is an estimation. It's there based on no current trends. Fact. You, you presented it like it's a fact. It's a fact. It's, it's a based fact. on current trends. It's an estimation. It's an estimation. It's a All prediction right? based on current trends. I'll tell you why it's an trends. estimation. Because it hasn't come to pass and it's more than likely not going to come to pass. It is if we do something about it now. And what we have to do is stop illegal immigration. We have to encourage birth rates to go up. And listen, if you even look at the model in... Um, in Iran, all right, the Persian people for thousands of years, even all the way back to 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 the the Old Testament and them times, have been attacked with real invasions. I mean, invasions I, with weapons. Let, no, I've got a point. Let me finish my point. Let me finish can my you point. answer the question? Hang on, hang on, hang on. One second. Is, one second, no, no, Ricky. No, no, Ricky, 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 Ricky. I'm not going to stop. Thousands of years. For thousands of years, the Persian people have not stopped being the majority in Iran. So for you to predict... That in 2060, right. we'll Ricky. be a that white British will be a minority. You're Ricky, wrong. you got to listen to this, right? What you've just said is that his estimations were wrong, but you said that. No, 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 it, no. I, I, I said. I said they're an estimation, right? Right, okay. That's and a, he, that's a fact. He, his estimations would be correct if things How continue. Would they be correct? Hang on, you've just said if we change Thank them, you. they won't be correct. All right. You said if we change them, they won't be correct. And you're correct in saying that if we change them. But if things stay the same, then they will be correct. Well, listen, she threw, a hypothesis. No, no, okay. she threw a hypothesis out and I threw one back. No, okay. it's a prediction based on current trends. All so right, well, I, well, I, well, I also throw out a prediction. Okay, well, let's just for a moment forget, forget whether it will or will not happen. If it did happen, would you think that that was a bad thing or a good thing? The British becoming a minority in Britain? I, I think that if it happens, it happens because I believe the British people are the British people. I don't believe the British people are just Okay, we're talking people. about the native British, the English, Scottish, Welsh, etc. If okay, they became a the minority in their right, country, who, would you who, think who that the, that was a good first, thing or a bad thing? Laura, who were the first British people? Why can it why can it answer the question? I, 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 who were the I, first British people? British people are Northwest Europeans, so it was the Celts who were here first. And then we had invasions from the, the you Northwest mean from, European from Germany. Side. From Germany. That's what that's who we are, yeah. Oh, so we're German. 
We're Northwest Europeans, yeah. We came from Europe. So we're German. We but they weren't called German then, were they? Uh, as an English person, uh, are you, I'm Are you a moderator? Are I'm you in this person. debate? Sorry, Shaq. I'll, so I'll shut up. <laughs> can you can you answer the question, Ricky? If the British became a minority in Britain, I've asked you four times. Now, I've already answered the question. the question. I already British. answered the question. What was I answer? don't believe, and I know that British is not just white people. All right, we're a but, country okay, if, with if people it with happen, many different skin colors that have came from many different lineages. And I tell you what, mm-hmm. some of them are way more British than you. They're at different levels to being British. You're either British or you're not. So um, the audience want to know if you think the British becoming a minority, becoming a minority in Britain, is a good thing or not. You don't seem I've to. Already, want to I've answer. already answered the question, but you no, want to keep asking. If it happens, you, you, if you're it happens, like you, have, you have a great, you have some great point that you're trying to. Um, Why won't you answer the question? Listen, let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I am passionate about this nation, and I want the best for this nation. And I know many people with black skin, with different shades of skin that want the same type of prosperity and good future for their children and even their children's children in this country. Okay, that that's makes nice. them listen, no, listen that makes them just as much patriotic as you mm-hmm. as okay this, you was, or me. this was the last conversation. I'm now asking you about the actual, you know, the English, the Scottish, the Welsh, etc. The native British. If they became a minority in Britain, despite whether you believe it's going to happen or not, would you think that that was a good thing or a bad thing? But I've just told you they can't become a minority. No, I'm, I'm how asking. Can they, how can they become a minority? Simon, it, do you understand the question? I'm saying if it happens, if we become less than no, 50, I, I, I understand. I, I, I'll, I'll ask the question again to me. The I, native, I, I, so the native British, so the yeah. English, Scottish, Welsh, etc., the ethnically British, if we became less than fifty percent of the population in the in the future, so if we became a minority in Britain. Would Ricky think that that was a good thing or a bad thing? And Ricky said, as long as they think they're British or they're I happy never to. Said that. Don't I said that. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hang you on, said right. you were neutral. I am neutral, but what you're you said, as, neutral, as, as long as they, they're happy to be British and they're British, you don't matter I what colour they are. All right, can, said, you, can you reword all right, it? Right? I'm, I'm going to do it, all right? I said that the British people won't become a minority because the British people are made up of people of all colours backgrounds, religions, so how can they become a minority? It's I'm impossible. Asking you about You're the talking native, about white people. I'm asking you about the native British. You know, You're people who are ethnically about white British. People. Yeah, ethnically guess, British. Guess what? Britain Why is not just white anymore. It, I feel like you want to hide anymore. this from your supporters because you don't want to admit that you don't I'm not care. hiding anything. So answer your, the question your, then. But but no, the, the, the place question. where you are... The, I've told you the answer. No, you haven't. I'm I've talking about the ethnically British. Would you care what about your, what your classification of ethnically now. British is not British to me? British is many different skin colors, many different. So, so you don't that even recognize the that there is an you're ethnic talking, group of British. You're people. talking. No, is that you're where we are now? About skin color. I'm talking you about can, ethnicity. You can wrap it up. You can wrap it up in ethnicity and uh, indigenous as much as you want. You're Ricky, talking if about you skin think, color. If you if think, you that, think that, that ethnicity that, that is just people can be British. All right, let me ask you this question. Can a black person be English? No, English is an ethnicity. Is, Ra- is Raheem Sterling English? No. Is Rio Ferdinand? No. <laughs> do, you not, do you not admit that the, the British are an ethnic group? I know you think everyone's British, but do you think that you can be ethnically I don't. British? I just, think, I just think the people of Britain are British. Do you, do you not agree that there is an ethnicity called British as well? So when I took my DNA test, it said that I was British. Can you admit that that's a thing? Your DNA test said what? That I was British. Can you admit that that's a How thing? How far did your DNA test go? Go. Why can you not answer the question? And and should everybody take a DNA test to prove that they're no. British? In your, in people, your people know what ethnicity they are. Why can you not answer the question? So let, you won't let me, answer. Let me, let me ask you won't answer about the let British becoming a minority in Britain, and you won't even you won't even admit that the ethnically British exist. That we are an ethnic group. That's how. And you call yourself a patriot? You have the I same political the views. British people. No you matter if they're white, no matter if they're Disney. black, no matter if they're Asian, the British people are the British people. You're trying to stand for a skin colour. You can wrap it up in ethnicity as much as you want. And look, let, let me let me just let me just say this here. So so Patriotic Alternatives leader, Mark Collette, young Nazi and proud, mm. that we all saw the Channel 4 documentary mm-hmm. of, of him um, not only showing admiration for Adolf Hitler, but mm-hmm. even even showing admiration for Nazi Germany in 1930 and, mm-hmm. sh- and saying that 
that was something that was that can be admired. That when you see them do do the Zeke Heil, that they, that they can be it, it's admirable. And before you tell me that that was years ago, well, I've re- I've read his book Fall of the Western Man. He mentions fifteen times National Socialism. He hasn't changed his opinion. His opinion yeah, but I, in this, that's in your this, leader. Do yeah. you agree with that position? In this debate, Rickett, you do not get to throw the scary N word now. You I think that you've won an argument position? because that won't wash with, with me. If you have a problem with national socialism, the then it's now it's now your responsibility to dismantle why you disagree with Marx's ideology. You don't so just you, get to go so Nazi you, so you or fascist and think that you agree with the ideology. You haven't. Do you Mark agree with is the ideology? a national socialist. Patriotic Alternative is not a national socialist organisation. He's somebody who loves Britain a lot more than you do, and he's well, a real patriot. You don't believe in national socialism. Can you I'm not a national socialist. National, patriotic Alternative is not a national socialist organisation. I mean, you can't even admit that the British are an ethnic group, and you don't care about British people becoming a minority with in with our own country. You're trying to brush this under the carpet, right? If this is the single the Nazis, issue that we face The today, Nazis murdered 8 million Jews, and your leader of your group is sympathising with them, admiring them. That's dangerous. Do you not see that as dangerous? What I see as dangerous, uh, you, you support Israel as being the home of the Jewish people. Jews murdered more people with the Holodomor. They murdered up to 20 million people. But that doesn't stop you because it's not it's not in existence today, so it doesn't matter. So instead of but throwing up... the Six-Day War. The Six-Day War. Israel won you, the Six-Day War. And they why do you agree for a homeland for Jews in Israel, but you don't for British people in Britain? Because British Br- Britain's not occupied by foreign forces. Well, some might nations. disagree. Some might disagree with that. Yeah, but listen, you are not answering the question about you your leader, any Mark of my and his Nazi sympathising. Right now, if you pair na- the fact that he's got a history of Nazi sympathising with the fact that you you guys are pushing an agenda of a white Britain, it's, it, alarm bells are ringing, red flags are out. You don't see that? Laurie, you seem like a sensible girl. I don't know if you've been brainwashed into this nonsense or what, but it is nonsense. You guys are just as dangerous as the far left. You guys are you guys are the far right. You are dangerous. So you're just throwing labels about? You sound like yeah, you belong, these, these, you these are like you belong in hope, not here. No, no, no. These are you've real labels. You've called us Nazi. You've called us fascist. You've called us racist. You've called us no, far right. I, 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 never, I never called you a Nazi. Ricky, Ricky, it's pathetic. I never called you a Nazi. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely pathetic. Simon. I never called them a Nazi. She's she's putting words in my mouth. I told her her leader is a Nazi sympathizer, and that's a fact. There's evidence. He's to not that. a Nazi. Nazi for a start is an anti-white slur. National socialism is Nazism. Look Nas- it up. National socialism is just an ideology. If you have a problem with it, you Which don't is just Nazism. Get to say, you don't just anti-Semitism. Get to say, isn't it funny? Got to be scared of me now. Laura, dismantle the it, ideology then, Ricky. Dismantle isn't, the isn't ideology. Isn't it funny? All right, I'll dismantle it. I'll dismantle it. All right, I'll dismantle it. Eight million no. Jews dead Can in I... Europe, dismantled, finished. No, that, that is not that is not the ideology. It national the socialism ideology. was a politi- proven. Right, Nazi Party That's were a Nazi Party. Nazi National Socialism is a political ideology. But anyway, right, that does millions does, of Jews to die? Yeah, yeah well, right, okay. Now, um, no, no, he, you can't he, just, uh, no, 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 no. I've not said. I've said. I, I'm going. Are, are we I'm, running I, away from that truth? Have I said that? I was just listening to you and going, "Hey, yeah, fair enough," because I. I can't be going to go, you're right, you're wrong, can I? As much as I can't, right? But you want to know, does Mark Collette, like, worship Adolf Hitler? Now, you're saying that he doesn't. Is that correct? Mark Collette does not worship Adolf Hitler. Patriotic Alternative has put forward a plan, and you can read the plan, and it's not National Socialism. If we were a National Socialist pair of people then Pierre's plan would be national socialism what Ricky's trying to do is bring up the holocaust which is you know the scariest event from history to shut down the debate but he doesn't care no. about the fact that Jews murdered 20 million people in the Holodomor in fact he actually supports a homeland for the Jews in Israel the Jews but he won't, do that, for the, for he won't do that for the British people in Britain that's right. what, La- what Laura just is. done is you might have missed it but what Laura just did is an anti-semitic Slayer oh, right now there. I'm the, anti-Semitic the Jews, as well. The Jews, I'll the add Jews that were, to my list as the well. Jews, the Jews were not responsible for a lot of more. You are just throwing things out there. You're, well, Mark you Collett isn't responsible for the Holocaust, but it doesn't stop you bringing it up. Yeah, and I, I didn't say that it was. I just said that he supports the the, the so, regime that caused and enacted the murder of millions of Jews, and that is a fact. That is not deny it. All right. Well, it's look, on video, uh, Channel Four, and you can read his book. So it's right there. That documentary is from twenty years ago. This com- me, do you know him better than me? Do you want to get onto different I do questions? know him better than you. 
Do you want to, how would you deal with a benefit system for people coming into this country? Each of you, right? I'll go to you, Ricky. How would you deal with a benefit system? A benefit system for people coming into this country. How would you deal with it? If they're coming in illegally, they need to be returned. No benefits. But we've got the problem. Um, I've just We have a problem as well with uh, the UN agreement in 1951, which says yeah. we've got to give them all of that shit. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. But listen, it's, when it comes down to December the 31st and when we Brexit, we are going to have more power. And we're going to have the chance for, to put the Maritime um, Power Act in and turn the boats around on the water if they're deemed to be illegal immigrants. Laura, what do you think? Well, first of all, illegal immigration is just a drop in the water compared to legal immigration. When it comes to legal immigration, we talk, we're talking about two thirds of a million people who are coming into the country every single year. So the figures of illegal immigrants is actually completely insignificant. But what I would do is uh, change the benefits system completely so that rather than it being a hammock that people can lie in and sponge off for their whole lives, it would be a safety net for people in times of need. You would have no benefits if you don't speak English. You would have no benefits unless you're an actual British citizen and you can prove that you're a functioning member of society but just the, the concept that illegal immigration if we stop illegal immigration we're suddenly going to save the country is ridiculous for a start we have people in the country already a quarter of the population who have very high fertility rates compared to british people we're talking 2.5 children per woman for black families and 3.5 children per woman for pakistani families and you sometimes you somehow seem to think that that can just stay and if we stop illegal immigration all the problems will be fixed it's yeah. just an incredibly infantile and childish way of thinking can I, I honestly feel like i'm talking to a 10 year old Right, second, right. Over to you, right. mate. Can you can, can you some insults? <laughs> right, okay. Can I have one minute out of here, just for two seconds, and, and come back? Can you answer that question a second, uh, Ricky? I literally bathroom. Sorry. All right. So, look, this is the thing. You never, you never answered me about about your leader. Like I said, you seem smart. I don't know how you got into all this stuff, but your leader, your leader has proven that he's that he's a sympathizer with the Nazis, with Adolf Hitler, and you guys are pushing an agenda that is against anybody who's not white. That's all. That's that's kind of the the same type of ideology in the Holocaust, wasn't it? It was ethnic cleansing. And oh, you the, guys Holocaust, are, the Holocaust. Yeah, but, yeah, listen, right, let's let's, the Holocaust. Right, listen. Let's not the Holocaust because then. we're losing you the guys are, No, but you guys are promoting an agenda that it, that is is a political ethnic cleansing. Do you not see that? It's not. An, how is it an ethnic cleansing? Because you want to clean to leave. all ethnicities out of the country who are not is white. That, just, uh, Ricky, what is the difference between your views and somebody like Ash Sarkar or David Lammy? Because they they also think that they are British. So what my is the difference are, between your views and theirs? My views are very different. How? They're not against illegal immigration. They're not... They're not okay, they're so not let's a, just forget about illegal immigration, but their entire worldview... Also how Romanians. Do you, how I'm, do you I'm differ I'm from somebody Brexit like here. that? I, I, listen, this is how I differentiate. I believe in a Britain with secure borders, with a points-based immigration system. I believe in a Britain that takes back foreign aid and invests it in Britain. I believe in a Britain that does everything to make British manufacturing come back and British jobs to increase. And I believe in a Britain that's very difficult to immigrate to, that only accepts people that are going to benefit this country. That's what I believe. Benefit that's who? why I'm different to Ashton. Benefit Tata, who? And that's how I'm different. Is it benefiting what? the native population if Chinese, you know, high IQ immigrants are coming over and taking their jobs? Is that benefiting you, the native I'll tell population? You benefiting. I tell you who it's benefiting, the people of Britain. And that's the new people who are coming over from China because they're just as British as us, right? So yeah, it does benefit them, I'm guessing, but it doesn't yeah, actually yeah. benefit the British, does it? And I'm talking about the actual British, not just people with British passports. How does the British people becoming a minority in their own country and feeling like a stranger in their own town and crime increasing and then the, and their kids being the only English kid in a classroom, how does that benefit them at all? Well, well, listen, it doesn't. Listen, that's a problem with immigration. And I've agreed with you, Laura, on immigration. immigration you've just said that you support a points-based system. That won't yeah. slow immigration down. It will just be a different it class will. of immigrants. No, it, it won't. It will slow it down. Well, that, it tells will me slow that, you, down. that tells me that you don't understand the new plan because it won't. It will because it will the be required, hard to get into the country. The required salary is just above minimum wage. It will not well, slow it down. I mean, you, you you keep talking about Indigenous British, Indigenous British. So I challenge you to a DNA test and you and you publicly post your results so we can see how British you are. Yeah, okay. It's already on YouTube. I'm 100% Northwest European. Okay, so then we need to see it. Can you retweet it tonight so we can see just you can how can go British to my YouTube you channel and see it. You, have it. you are so Indigenous British uh, that you I have am. the right 
to tell many other British people in this country who don't share the same DNA as you that they need that they shouldn't be living here. It's <laughs> you couldn't write it. It's well, crazy. again, I haven't said that they shouldn't be living here. I've said that they can have well, listen, voluntary. Let me talk about your. Let me talk about your repatriation plan. All right. So your repatriation plan is to offer incentives of around fifteen thousand pounds to people who are not indigenous, who are not who are not white British in their DNA, in their in their in their history and background. Now you're looking at around eleven million people that are not white British or indigenous, as you say. So let's just put your 15,000 into 11 million. And guess what you get? 165 billion. That's mm-hmm. the exact amount of money that Jeff Bezos is worth. Where are you getting your 165 billion from? Uh, well, for a start, international aid is around 14 billion per year. And we haven't That's suggested we haven't suggested that they all have not to leave in the same year. There's all sorts of places where we can take the money from. I'm actually not concerned about the economic side of it at all. For, for an example... NHS translators cost us £64,000 per day. Even things like that would be four people a day. But international aid is 0.7% of um, profit. So that's around, that. That's. I mean, we could cover it in maybe 10 years just from international aid alone. But I think, I think what's, we're not what's saying that everybody has to leave in the first year. We're saying over time, that's how it would go on. So the yeah, financial sure. side is not a problem at all. But everybody has to leave over time. Not everybody, but anybody who wants to. I mean, everyone who's not white. Like- Oh, okay. Okay, I, I missed British. that point. You mean British? Sorry, sorry, I missed. I missed that point. So you're saying that um, they don't have to leave. So if everybody refuses, it's fine. We're offering voluntary repatriation if people oh, okay. want to take it. So we've been basically... we've been through this quite a few no, times no, no, already. But, but it, it needs to be clear. If if everyone says no, then it the country will remain as it is. I actually did a speech at the last conference, so it's it's already very clear. Feel free to go and watch that. So on on your on your DNA test, you said it's 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 northern. Mm-hmm. European, so that's not that mean, European. Mm-hmm. That doesn't that, mean it's British. That's right? who we are. Who do you think we are? Where do you think so we came means, from? So that means every everybody is not really, truly, truly British, right? If you're no, if you're mean, if you're North oh, Western okay. European, it could so, be so Pop, now we could be Holland. Just, just for the audience to listen to this, we're now doing that. The British people don't exist. Argument. You have the same arguments as people like hope, not hate. No, the Honestly, British people can, do exist. This the is not patriotism. You're saying that British people don't exist, and some of them are black. You're saying that British people don't exist. So British people are are black. This this is what people with FB, FBPE and their Twitter names do. You have so the listen, same listen, arguments listen. as them. No, no, no. Listen, mm-hmm. you refuse to accept that British people can be black, that British people people can be Asian, um, that they can have different skin colours. You you reject that. That means you isolate a huge percentage of this country with that ideology and in such a divisive time when these uh, different groups are happening and black people and white people are battling with each other because of the BLM um, things that everyone's identifying as this and identifying as that and yeah so because that's natural country, because that's how they so do identify in this country you want to create more division and that's why I say that you're dangerous you are dangerous to the people of Britain the whole ideology you're presenting, it lines up with the same Adolf Hitler. Oh, here we go. Here that we your go. guy, Mark <laughs> Collette, has admitted that he loves. You have and no I mean, arguments. You can, you can so try and laugh it off no because I know, so you I know you, you've Nazis. been made. No, no, it's not. No, you, Ricky, it's pathetic. I never called anyone a Nazi. You I are. Called anyone a Nazi. It's honestly. I've not I don't called anyone a Nazi. This conversation is, I can only hope that your audience are listening to this and they've heard you say that British people don't exist, that it doesn't matter if I they become a minority that. in their own You're country. Being disingenuous. And they've heard you call me a Nazi. Being disingenuous. Right, 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 yeah, I got a second. Yeah, yeah, I got a second. Ray. What you need to clear up here. Uh, Laura, is when you were saying British people, in your view, it's white British people. It's yeah, ethnically British people. Yeah. Okay, if we no, say no. That, 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 I got a second. If we say if you what you're saying is white British people, mm. right? That that clears up a lot, and then Ricky can say, I believe that the, the British people are people who believe they're British, who are legally British, or that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then when we're on that, you know exactly where you are. Here, all right. So mm. yours, white British. Yours is mixed British, but British. Mm. Correct. Well, I, I identify as Chinese now, so I, I, I want to be called Chinese because you just have to say that you identify it and that makes it true, apparently. Then go back to China. <laughs> Twat. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, what happened? I took him out. 
he wants, Why did he, you wants say to, to he wants to call me a twat when he's supposed to be the moderator. He was laughing so, at what you said. It's just me and you now. He was laughing at what you said. It's just, it's just me and you. So look, point two and three in your manifesto talks about exempting those who share cultural, ethnic backgrounds and allowing migration of such people. So how do you define them? People? Actually, Ricky, I don't want to continue people. speaking to you without a moderator. I thought that was very rude. He was actually laughing at your joke. And what, you just what, kicked him out, and he's given what, up his free time to talk to you. What was so rude, either you allow was Simon rude, back in, or I don't want to talk rude, to you. Was rude calling me. He was laughing uh, at your joke because you said go back to China. He laughed yeah. when he said it, and you booted him out. Of, and you do you know what? You, you also get very offended at certain memes on Twitter. People have just been posting funny videos and stuff, and you've been DMing me saying, "Oh my God, is this what you guys believe?" It's just a joke. If you're going to be involved in politics, you're really going to have to learn to toughen up because you're not going to last two minutes. Uh, I'm not going to last two minutes. Listen, I've already said your ideology is not a sticker. You've not, you've not came here. You've, you've, you've shown me or the people watching nothing in terms of proof or evidence that your ideology is good. All you've done is show <laughs> well, that you the, guys the are, are led by a, na a Nazi sympathizer <laughs> and your ideology lines up with that of the Nazis. So I you, think it's very oh, okay. fair to say <laughs> that you guys are really on the wrong side of history. You've not done well in this debate at all. You just call me a Nazi because you have no arguments. And I still haven't called anybody a Nazi. You, that's literally what you're doing. You've brought up the Holocaust about 15 times and you've called people Nazis. You don't have any arguments. But are we going to finish this then because you've booted Simon and I don't want to talk to you without a moderator? Um, yeah, no problem. So thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And even though I don't agree with, with your stance and, and obviously you don't agree with mine, yeah. Um, you know, debate's important. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And there's certainly no no hatred from my side towards you or anything. It's just a difference of ideas. And I hope that you can come round and see sense and see that you're you're pushing an evil mm -hmm. ideology. Yeah. Onto my, my ideology is non-negotiable. I'm never going to say that it's fine for the British to, to become a minority in Britain. I don't think that you will that you will ever change your mind. But I hope that your audience listens to some of the things that I said today. And I hope that if any of your audience do think that the British exist and that we should be the majority in our own country, I would hope that they joined us at Patriotic Alternative because Ricky can't even answer that question about whether we deserve our own homeland. But it's different for the Jews in Who, Israel. Who's we? Who's we? That's the no, thing. Listen, I'm going to go now, people, Richard. People Are need to run away, run away from patriotic alternative Are as we, quick as they can. British Lives Matter is the movement for all British people, not just white people. It's not a racist movement, as you've proven patriotic patriotic alternative is uh, evil so, yeah. nazis we're evil nazis but all right thank you to everyone racist. in the audience for listening i hope Thanks you enjoyed it and i'll see you again soon proving it